I was a new student to Southern Lehigh High School in Pennsylvania. Going into my junior year of high school not knowing anyone was really rough. Everyone obviously had their friend group sorted out by then. The worst part was lunchtime though. My school wouldn't let juniors leave for lunch, only seniors, so I had to eat in the cafeteria. I was dreading it because I knew I'd have no one to sit with, and I didn't want to force myself into a random table. When lunchtime finally came, however, I walked into the cafeteria with my tray of food looking for a place to sit. Every single table was taken. I didn't even have the option of sitting alone. But there was one table in the corner of the cafeteria with only two kids sitting at it. That was the least intimidating spot to sit, so I walked over and asked if I could sit there. They both looked at each other, and one of them said yeah. I noticed upon sitting down that the two were identical twins. They looked like they were partially of Hispanic heritage, but they didn't have accents. They honestly seemed alright. They introduced themselves as Antonio and Bruno, and they had a conversation with me. They invited me to hang out with them after school, and honestly I figured why not? I had to start off somewhere as far as making friends. I got their numbers, and after school, I went home to drop off all my stuff. Shortly after, I got a text from Bruno, telling me he and his brother were planning on hanging out. He told me to meet them around 9 that night at the nearby cemetery that was like a 10 minute walk from my house. He said there was a cool hangout spot near there. Plus, the first day of school was on a Friday, so we had off the next day. I had nothing to do, so I said, yeah, I'm down. When the time came, Bruno texted me one more time asking if I was still coming. I said, yeah, I'm gonna leave in a few, and confirmed we were meeting on the road by the cemetery. He said, yeah. So I began my walk in the dark to the cemetery. The longer I walked, the more I thought about my whole move and being the new kid in high school, and thinking about the fact that I was literally walking to a cemetery at night to hang out with two kids I just met. But anyway, I got to the little road next to the cemetery and asked Bruno where they were. He started typing right away, and he said they were in the woods hanging by a small lake that they wanted to show me. Then he promptly sent his location. So I made my way into the woods, pushing branches out of my way, using my tiny phone flashlight as my only light. I started calling for Bruno and Antonio as I felt like I was close enough, according to the location he sent me at least. Suddenly I heard footsteps, so I stopped. Definitely footsteps approaching me, but they were very low and slow. They called out that they better not be trying to scare me. When they weren't answering me though, I decided this was stupid. I turned and started walking back towards the road. But those footsteps I mentioned earlier, they turned from quiet and slow to fast, and before I could even react, someone had their nails digging into my neck, effectively choking me. I heard a familiar voice screaming, grab him, grab him. I managed to break free from this sort of chokehold and sprinted towards the road. I know they followed me until the tree line by the road. I was faster than them, and I could run for miles. And that's what I did. I ran straight home and told my parents. They considered calling the cops, but I thought it would be better to get pictures of the nail marks on my neck and report it to the school the next day. That's what we did, and with the help of the text that I got from Bruno, I was able to get the two students expelled. My parents made me block both their numbers. I didn't exactly argue with that, though. My parents wanted me to confirm that these kids didn't know where we lived, and I told them simply, not as far as I know. So anyway, one night about a week later, I woke up to my room feeling really cold. I heard the sound of wind blowing into my room, and I looked at the window to see it was slid completely open. I wondered if my mom came in to open it, but that would make absolutely no sense. It was like 50 degrees out that night. I walked over to it and looked down below. A few feet below my bedroom window, there's a part of the exterior of my house that comes outward creating a sort of ledge underneath my window that my father always told me to jump onto in case of a fire. I shut my window and walked over to my parents' bedroom. I gently knocked and opened the door, and my mom groggily asked what. I had to ask her if she opened my window. She sat up saying, no, why? 
I told her in a louder, more concerned voice now that my window was opened all the way by somebody. She started shaking my dad to wake him up and go check my room with me. But when he woke up, he told me to grow up and go back to sleep. I left my parents' door open as I walked back down the hall to my room. Then, I picked up on something that I'm surprised I picked up on. My door. It seemed to be half shut now as opposed to completely open when I left. I pushed the door open just a little bit so I could get a look through the crack and see if, you know, someone was behind the door. Even though I had the thought of the possibility, I never could have actually expected to see it. There was someone hiding behind my door. I screamed for my dad like a little girl. I screamed so loud I'm sure it could be heard three doors down. Then my door suddenly slammed shut, just as my dad came rushing out of his room over to me. I screamed there's people in my room, so he barged into the room and turned the light on. At that moment, we saw the leg of a person jumping out my window. My dad ran to the window, then downstairs and out the front door to attempt to chase them down, but he came back a few minutes later out of breath, saying he didn't see anyone. Full of energy and fear, I swore it had to be those twins that I got expelled. My dad called the police, and I had to talk to them when they arrived, explaining the whole story back to the incident in the woods. My father backed up my story, but without proof of who entered, they said there wasn't anything they could do. They merely ordered us to lock the doors and consider installing cameras outside. As positive I am that it was either one of or both of those twins in my room, after getting through a solid couple months of sleeping in fear, nothing to this nature ever happened again. Looking back now, I don't know why I was so willing to meet these kids in the woods at night. I should have realized in the cafeteria that day that they looked like trouble, and I should have stayed away. Freshman year of high school, 2007. Gym class, last period. We had a substitute gym teacher on one of the stormiest days of the year. He was an older man, not a senior citizen, but gray, maybe 55 to 60. He took attendance, and when he passed me, he did a double take at me, which I found a bit uncomfortable. Not to float my own boat, but I always understood I looked older and really good for a freshman in high school. The sub told us to get into our volleyball teams, and he disappeared into the hall by the locker rooms for a while. Forty minutes went by and the period was over. It was time for us to get changed and go home. I got into the locker room, but for some reason, my locker wasn't opening. I tried my usual combination over and over and over. It wouldn't click open though. I had to go to the sub and let him know to ask for my combination again. I figured maybe the combo just slipped from my mind for some reason. The sub told me to give him a few minutes and he'd get the list of locker combos. I waited outside the office, and out he finally came with a book in his hands, open to a specific page. He walked into the girls' locker room with me, which I didn't expect him to do. The locker room was basically empty now, with one girl finishing up changing. We walked over to my locker and tried the combination written down on the paper. It didn't work no matter how many times he tried it. Each time he tried it and failed, he would look at me and laugh. I would force myself to laugh along to be polite, but it started getting weird. He put his hand on my shoulder as he said, we'll figure this out. He tried the combination again, with his hand still on my shoulder. When it didn't work again, I felt his hand slowly started inching down from my shoulder to my lower back. I pushed myself away and grabbed my bag saying, it's okay, I'm late for my bus. He tried a combo in the locker one more time and it opened. He smiled and walked away. I waited till I heard the locker room door shut. Then I proceeded to getting changed quickly, when suddenly the room went dark. I finished pulling up my pants and shut my locker in the dark. I threw on my backpack and started walking to the back exit of the locker room, which led outside. I feared that the sub would be waiting right by the door for me. I got predatory vibes from him. When I got to the end of that specific aisle of lockers I was in, I was in the intersection of two rows. I'd have to turn down left to get to the exit door, but still, 
Naturally, I had to look right to make sure that it was clear. There was a little light seeping in from one single rectangular window that sat under the ceiling. It was enough. Enough for me to see him peeking at me from around the wall of lockers. So that's when I ran for the exit door. He came over behind me saying, wait, 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 it's not what it looks like. I ran outside into the rain off the campus of the high school and walked the rest of the way home, giving me time to reflect on what happened. By the time I got home, soaking wet, it came to me that he most likely changed my locker combination somehow as a way of getting alone with me in the locker room. As for what he could have possibly been planning to do when he cut the lights, I never wanted to imagine. Honestly, I was too emotionally scared and quite frankly embarrassed to tell anyone about it, not even my parents or friends. It was something I just kept to myself all these years, because truthfully, I just don't feel comfortable telling people. When I was in high school, I was in the band. At my school, band was basically an easy A. It was either that, orchestra, or chorus, so I went with band. Anyhow, our band teacher, Mr. Nicholson, had the grading system set up so that as long as you attended class and went to your weekly lessons, you got an A. Sadly, towards the end of one quarter, I was missing two lessons. Because of that, my grade was a B. I went to him after class to ask if I could make up the lessons, and even though he seemed reluctant, he said he would let me come in during a lunch period and practice in one of the downstairs storage rooms to get credit for a lesson. I was more than happy with that, because realistically, I would probably just play games on my phone anyway instead of actually practicing. I arrived to the music room during my lunch period the next day, so I took my saxophone and headed down the stairs outside the music room towards the basement area for the music department. It was always kind of creepy down there because absolutely no one besides the music teachers would go down there usually, and the lights were kind of shitty. I'd only been down there a couple times before that day. But anyway, I walked down the hallway, and on either side were a bunch of doors that led into small, maybe 7x7 seven seven feet rooms. All of these rooms were used for storing things like chairs, music stands, spare instruments, Christmas decorations, and whatever. I stepped into one of the rooms and shut the door. I set up my music on one of the stands in the room just in case Mr. Nicholson were to come down to check on me, but really I didn't plan on actually playing. I started playing games on my phone and then flick, darkness, like as dark as it could get, minus my phone screen. I looked over to the light switch to the room just instinctively, flicked it up and down a few times, but that did nothing. I stumbled as I got up from the seat to open the door, to more darkness. I held my phone out in front of me to light up this little hallway, even if it was just barely. I think I had like an iPhone 3 or something, and those old ones didn't have flashlights. But anyway, that little light from my phone was enough to see one of the doors open near the end of the hall, and I heard something being dragged in that room, like one of the big plastic containers. There was also manic breathing followed by animal-like grunting. Then I saw a big plastic container being pushed out of that room into the hallway. As I saw this, I turned off my phone screen and went back into the room I was just in. I shut the door so quietly, I don't know what exactly I was thinking in that moment that I decided to hide, but I think the strange sounds I was hearing from this person, mixed with the random blackout, made me wary of staying in that hallway. Whoever that was was blocking the stairs though, of course, I got no reception down in that little basement area. All I felt comfortable doing was sitting in that room and waiting for the lights to hopefully turn back on. But the lights seemed like they were never going to turn back on. So I decided I would try and get back upstairs again. I quietly opened the door with my phone in front of me for light. Then I stepped into the hall. I inched up a little closer to the stairs. Then I heard something again quickly crept into the next closest room with the door open and shut it. I still didn't know what I was hiding from. Could it have been a staff member or a janitor? At that point, the only reason I had of thinking it wasn't was because they only appeared down there after the lights turned off. I stood in that room in complete darkness, only listening and waiting for another sound from outside. But you know how when you're in a room with someone, even if you don't necessarily hear them, you can kind of just sense their presence. 
That's suddenly the feeling I got standing in that pitch black room. I lifted my shaking hand up and pressed the home button on my phone to turn on the screen, just for half a second. That was enough to see someone standing in the corner of this little storage room, three feet away from me. I pretended I didn't see anything, but it was too late. Shh, is what I heard, breaking the silence. Then, a hand patted my shoulder twice and started squeezing it. I basically dove for the doorknob, struggling to find it at first, but pulling the door open when I did. The man in the room with me tried pushing the door shut after I opened it, but I was already out. I ran up the stairs and out the door to the main level of the music hall, where the lights were still on. I ran to Mr. Nicholson to tell him out of breath. He called security to check the basement section of the music hall, but security came back upstairs and said besides a bunch of music equipment moved around, there wasn't anyone down there. The rest of the period, Mr. Nicholson canceled his flute lesson, and I sat there in the room with him and five flute players explaining the whole story in detail. Without cameras in the music hall, there was no way of catching whoever went down there and killed the power for the basement. It seemed that he was trying to steal expensive music equipment. That or God knows what else. The next day, I was called into the dean's office to give my story of what happened, and the rest is history. One night, my friends and I hatched a genius plan. We'd sneak into the high school basement through one of the windows that was broken and never fixed. The thing about this window, you'd have to hop a short metal gate surrounding an outside staircase leading to the basement. Not that it would effectively stop anyone, but it added that extra barrier that makes you feel like you're really doing something devious when you crossed over it. We made sure there weren't any security cars anywhere nearby and hopped the gate. Crawling in through the window proved difficult, considering we had to boost ourselves up, then crawl through an insanely skinny opening. But once we were in, we were in. We kind of dispersed from each other to explore different areas. One thing was for sure, the basement of the school was a mess, and anything but interesting. There was little light, one small white light was on in a far corner, and the exit sign light actually produced more light than you'd think. I was looking around when I saw one of my friends in front of me. He whispered, let's go upstairs. So I followed him upstairs and he opened the door up to the main hallway of the school. Everything was dark. I always thought there were at least some lights left on in the school at night. But no, not a single light was on. And all that really stood out as far as the eye could see were the various exit signs glowing red. I followed my friend down the hall and remembered saying, dude, this is really creepy. And he replied back, shh. But I realized he was right. Who knew if somebody else could be in the building besides my friends and I? Little did I know just yet. I followed my friend to the bathroom, and he went into one of the stalls. I whispered, hurry up. I waited for a while. Then my phone started to ring. I picked up, and it was one of my friends, Chris. He asked, where the hell did you go? I set him upstairs with either Roland or Brandon. He said, what do you mean? They're with me. And right after, both Brandon and Roland said hi, apparently on speakerphone. I stuttered the word I and stopped, trying to think straight. Then, there was a laughing coming from in the stall. Not the laugh of any of my friends. I looked up at the stall. There was someone looking over it at me, probably standing on the toilet. I screamed holy shit over and over into the phone as I left the bathroom. Shortly after I was out, I heard the stall door slam shut. I tried to run back to the basement in the dark, but it wasn't too easy to find in the dark. Luckily I managed to find it, so I started to scream their names as I ran down the stairs. I screamed go go when they answered, and we one by one jumped off some kind of bucket onto the window ledge and crawled back outside. I was the first one out though afraid that person from the bathroom was following. When we were all outside, I explained to them, out of breath, while also laughing now that I felt safe with all of them next to me. I guess we were loud or something though, because as we all just started looking around at the whole school building and all the classroom windows, in one of the downstairs windows was someone with their hands pressed up on the glass. We could only see maybe half their face. 
I said that's got to be him, as Roland ushered us to get the hell out of there. We ran until we were off the premises of the school, and that was that. We came up with a lot of possible explanations, but none of them really made sense. Obviously, we never did anything like that again, though.